This week in Nerf, we've got a toy company monopoly, new blasters on shelves, and the evolution of the Scar Barrel. I'm Jangular, and this is your source for first party, third party, and community Nerf news. Jumping right on in, like I said, there may be a toy company monopoly on the horizon. A uh, Reddit post shared by Walcom S7, and actually, before I get into this really quick, I just want to mention I am going to link a video that Walcom posted recently. Uh, I don't want to get too far into this because this could be a video in and of itself, but uh, he has been getting hit by dislike bombs and things like that. And it is something that is concerning for me as another small channel and other small channels, I'm sure, are concerned because nothing has been done by YouTube to alleviate that problem. So hopefully YouTube with some more recognition will actually start addressing these problems and fixing them, but I will let you go watch that video and check it out if you haven't already. Back to the news itself. Hasbro has put in a bid to buy Mattel. Now this isn't the first time this has happened and uh, it likely won't be the last time, but it is something that is always interesting to think about and always interesting to look into uh, as to what it would do to the landscape of the blaster market. Uh, now, Hasbro has been doing better than Mattel lately. Uh, Mattel's numbers have been falling over the last year or so, I believe, and Hasbro has been uh, somewhat on the rise comparatively. And I want to say they're, uh, I can't remember the exact numbers, but they are considerably worth more in terms of stock value than Mattel. And so now seems like a reasonable time to strike for Hasbro to try and get that competitor under their wing, under the, you know, under their control. And so, like I said, this is the first time this has happened, and obviously it wasn't successful in the past. And a recent article came out updating the situation, and uh, the first bid that Hasbro put in was refused by Mattel. Apparently it was a lowball offer because of the way things have been going for Mattel lately. Uh, this doesn't mean there won't be follow-up bids or follow-up offers, and we, we don't know how things will progress from there, but it is very interesting to keep an eye on because if Mattel, uh, if Mattel is bought by Hasbro, we don't know what happens to Boomco. Now, it's, it's possible they will choose to keep the Boomco line uh, and try and do things with their licenses, but it's also possible that they will just take the licenses, uh, if possible to do so, and apply them to Nerf products, which... Honestly, I may not be too upset about. I wouldn't mind seeing some Halo Nerf Blasters uh, and some other things. That said, I do kind of want Boomco to stick around just because they have done some interesting and fun things. Uh, as much as I wish that they had gone with something more uh, not proprietary that they, they did with their smart stick darts and all of that. But... I don't want to see them disappear by any stretch. I also, all in all, I don't think I want this merger to happen. I don't, I don't think I want this acquisition to happen, rather, uh, because I do like competition. And when you take competition away, things get worse for the consumer. So that's, that's, that's my stance on it. But uh, I will certainly be keeping my eye on this as it progresses and see if anything further happens after the first refusal of the initial bid. But want to let you all know about that. The links will be down below to both of the articles that reference the initial bid and uh, what happened after the initial bid. So I'll let you guys take a look at all of that. Now, in Malaysia, the Elite Surge Fire has been seen in a Toys R Us. This was shared by Shenkowich on Reddit. It's apparently going to be approximately $35 US after uh, you know doing all the, the transition between their, their currency and ours here in the US. Uh, this, is, this is interesting to me because I didn't expect to see these for a while and I'm wondering if this is a sign that we'll start to see some of the other blasters start to peek out and, and leak out into stores overseas before they make their debut here stateside. Uh, which has happened in the past and has become a bit of a trend. I'm sure much of this may of Hasbro themselves. They would like to keep their street dates locked in, I'm sure. But for us, the consumer, the, ha the, the, the hobbyists, it's fun to see these things sneak out and, and hit the streets before they're supposed to because we get to get our hands on them. And that's always kind of neat. You know, it's a race to who can get it first and, oh, is that one I really want? I'll go pick it up. I'll see if I can get someone to mail me one and I'll pay them for it. You know, it's that kind of stuff that creates a little bit of uh, excitement or buzz. Now, the Surge Fire may not be the most exciting of some of the newer blasters, but 
it is neat to see nonetheless and i will be keeping my eye out on where things go from there if we start seeing more and more hopefully not all at once i do kind of like when they they sneak in over time but regardless interesting nonetheless that it is out on a shelf somewhere in malaysia right now that's going to bring us to uh something else from blaster tech now Scar barrels have been a thing for a while now. Uh, they've gained popularity and, and very much so now they are becoming very prominent in the scene as a way to increase your accuracy. And while there are plenty of debates on why they work and what they exactly do, uh, we're starting to work through some of these theories and, and gain uh, some more knowledge and ideas on just exactly how they're working. And uh, Blaster Tech has gone ahead and take this to the next level. One of the theories is that, uh, that scar barrels don't just spin the dart. The, the spinning of the dart isn't the only thing that increases accuracy or may not even be any part of the increased accuracy. We can't say 100% for certain yet, though we do have anecdotal evidence. Uh, it's the porting or the muzzle brake effect that also has an effect on that accuracy as if your barrel isn't the right size, you could get excess air that is going to cause issues with stability for the dart as it leaves the barrel. So adding a scar barrel that has venting or porting inside of it like the new Blaster Tech scar barrel does is something that can add to increased accuracy for the right setup. Uh, I think this is really cool and I think on top of it what I really like about this scar barrel is it's adjustable, which many scar barrels are, but this one actually looks, it appears as though it pops out and then locks in at your setting. So it, it can't shift or move. And you have to actually purposefully change the setting. And I think that's a really, really nice touch that will differentiate from other, other scar barrels on the market. And that to me is actually my favorite thing on top of the, the barrel porting effect that they are going for, which is super cool. And I love that we're continuing to see an evolution of these products and what they do and, and, and testing and all these things that go hand in hand with product development. There's actually a video showing some of the effects uh, of these on the Blaster Tech YouTube channel, which I will link to along with some of the other posts for this scar barrel. Now, it's time for the mod of the week. Let's do a fun one. I, I, I thought I thought a fun one would be would be in order, and this is the Kit Kat Mega Hammer Shot by Yataro Kit Kat. Uh, it is a four shot mega cylinder for the hammer shot. Now they did have to go through and completely redo the front end of the hammer shot, so it definitely requires some serious shell modification. Uh, you, yeah, you you have to reattach the front end with a 3D printed replacement, I believe, if my uh, eyes did not deceive me when I was watching the video, but it's a fun mod. I mean, it's a single, single hand usable mega blaster. Like that is so cool. It's, it doesn't perform amazingly. The FPS is, it's nothing to write home about by any stretch, but it's still fun. And it's, it's, it's one of those things you just like, you can't not like it because it's entertaining to watch. Like you just see these big mega darts sticking out of a, a hammer shot cylinder. And it's like, those aren't supposed to be there. I dig it. I dig it. But uh, it was just something that I thought was really interesting and fun to see. And that's something that, you know, as I love performance mods and, and aesthetic mods and stuff like that, it's important to remember the fun mods. The things that, you know, this blaster will even still have some function in a, like an HVZ game where you need to have uh, mega darts to stop certain kinds of zombies. And it's not like an HVZ, you need crazy long range. So having something that's not as uh, high powered isn't a hindrance. So I think this thing will be really cool in situations where it is warranted or needed. And I think it's awesome that he did this. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and link his Instagram where he has pictures of not only that mod, but some other stuff that he's been working on that I uh, thought was pretty cool. So go check that out. That's going to bring us to the video of the week. And on that topic of fun and lightheartedness, let's get something from Beret. I love this guy. I, he's someone I've nerfed with down here and he's moved to a different location, which is a bummer. But uh, I love the videos he produces. He always has a fun outlook on things and a, an entertaining take on it. And his HVZ minigames video is no different. Uh, his personality is just so entertaining. I, I, I can't, I can't put it 
fully into words, but not only did he edit the video in a way where uh, I felt entertained and engaged watching it, but his personality comes through very much in it, and it's his... His, his nature is just so entertaining and enjoyable that I can't not want to share this and make it the video of the week because I definitely think all of you should go check this video out. Uh, not only is it, a, is it just fun to watch and he, is he a fun, entertaining person, but the location he plays at, he's playing in the snow and there's some cool kind of stuff that he's playing around and it just... Uh, <laughs> it's really fun and I love the ending. I'm not going to tell you the ending, but I love the ending. So go go watch it. That video is going to be right over here because we are at the end of the episode. Let me know what you thought of everything in today's episode. Do you want to see Hasbro by Mattel or do you want them to stay different companies? Do you uh, like seeing blasters hitting the streets before they're supposed to? Do you like new scar barrels? Well, let me know what you think of everything. And if you're new to the channel and enjoyed this video, feel free to hit that subscribe button for more in the future. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I'm Jangular, and I'll see you next time.